feel like you just want to travel the world but don't want to leave your house, let alone your city? Well, do I ever have a concept for you? If you've watched the trailer or read the book this movie is based on, you would know what I'm talking about. This is 2018's Mortal Engines. Don't go away. So, 2018's Mortal Engines. I actually remember the trailer for this movie when it was being released because when I, I saw it on TV when I was watching a hockey game or something, I'd be like, whoa, cities are fighting on wheels. Like, two cities are fighting on wheels. This is kind of a cool new concept, which is hard to come by nowadays. I will specify that I have not read the book yet. So we begin the movie with an exhilarating chase between a very big city on wheels chasing down a smaller city, National Geographic style. The bigger city is pretty much doing this for the fuel resources on the smaller one, but I have one major question. How does anyone even f live on this place? Seriously, I could be like cooking a dinner or, or, or just, you know, just putting away dishes or some shit. Boom, the whole fucking place starts rocking around. The dishes, you would literally have to nail your dishes on the wall. And if people are going to say, oh, well, it's balanced out. There's no way. Look at this scene. Tell me the dishes are not flying off the shelves everywhere. Or at least they have rubber plates. Or just, I don't know. Something's got to be going up here. Give me everything you have. Wait, wait, wait. Go back there. Give me everything you have. Well, no wonder the bigger city's catching up. The engine's literally on stop. Take the shot. I mean, the odds of you harpooning this target from thousands of feet away, let alone a moving target. I, I, I wouldn't be too concerned. I very highly doubt this works. Okay. I guess this is just going to be with that kind of movie. Is it bad of me that I kind of thought that they were going to an incinerator? Like, it is nice that the city gets captured and the people get to live and integrate and adapt to the new city, become workers and have a real life. But I kind of thought they were just going to the incinerator. Either way, because of this, the main character, Hester, who you can tell is the main character by how much her wardrobe stands out against the crowd. She's here to avenge her dead mother by killing Thaddeus. Thaddeus, by the way, is the main villain of this movie. And his role in this city, the large city of London, I'm not too sure. He's like one of the main guys. He's not the main guy. But either way... He gets to live because surprisingly this half thought out assassination attempt goes down the drain like in an extremely quick fashion. This is for my mother. By the way, this despite being stabbed directly in the gut here, this does not hinder him in any way for the rest of the movie at all. You know what? I'm just going to tag this as one of those movies where the main character gets to live through anything simply because they're the main character. I've got you. Just drop her. It's literally a slide. So yeah, Thaddeus reveals just how menacing he is when he straight up throws one of his own civilians down the poop chute. Really not that big of a surprise, but a cool scene nonetheless. Sure. But how? How lucky do you have to be? So as we move on, the people who just saved Tom and Hester are now flipping. They're turning Hester and Tom over to, fuck, I don't know who these guys are, but they're selling them off as slaves. Do I have 10 foot? Three. Oh, you stingy bastard to group. You could do better than that. 50. Who the fuck is this? <laughs> no. What the fuck is going on? What is this? I don't know why I find that scene so funny. It's just completely random. She is dressed completely different from everyone else. It just looks like someone wandered into the wrong set. 
I just started shooting. I don't know. What, I don't know. I don't understand what's going on. So around this point, Shriek is introduced to the audience, and he is by far the best thing this film has to offer. Simply put, Hester's mom was killed when she was young, forcing her to leave and be raised by this wacko of a thing. She made a promise to Shriek to turn into someone like him one day, but then she left to kill Thaddeus, and now Shriek is pissed, and he's back. Cat! Okay, come on. You're gonna throw a knife from 40 feet up? And I'm going to grab it and it's not going to be on the blade side and I'm going to grab it perfectly. This is going to be one of those movies where I go to the doctors after and they ask what happened. I'm just like, yeah, my eyes got stuck because I was watching this movie and I roll my eyes so much that they just got permanently glued there. He's literally cutting towards himself. After this, we skip a bunch of scenes straight to where Tom and Hester are brought by the badass lady in red to the city in the sky. Bioshock Infinite Columbia style. But... Shriek shows up there too. Honestly, this is not a good fight scene. Like, I was not into this at all. Like, at all. And that's usually if I, I can tell if it's a good, you know, in, you know, adrenaline momentum scene if, if I'm on the edge of my seat. But honestly, I was sitting back so chill. Even though Shriek is surrounded 40 to 1, they all attack one at a time. Which is always one of the most annoying things I've ever found in films. They also do, like, fancy presentation moves that make no difference. L look at this. Why did he have to throw the grenade at his teammate so his teammate could throw the grenade at Shriek, who was three feet behind the original guy? No. I'm the one. I'm the one you came for. Let him go. Let him live. So this is probably the best scene in the movie by far. I actually felt the development of a single tear in my eye. The acting is incredible here, and overall, this is just a well done scene that really caught my attention. He can't! He can't! You love him. Anyway, so the plasma weapon is hot, and uh. Oh! Oh, I forgot to mention because it's so skipped over so quickly. Uh, Thaddeus has a massive 600 foot plasma weapon uh, capable of creating pretty much black holes and sucking in the entire fucking earth. So yeah, that is uh, that is part of this movie. So the plasma weapon is starting to warm up and get hot and at this point we get into a pretty decent aerial combat scene. Now that we've reached pretty much the climax of the movie, where it's not really that intense, honestly. Hester has the key to self-destruct the plasma gun. Apparently, it was the item that her mother bequeathed to her as she was dying. Kind of an extremely lucky play, but whatever. This scene is more frustrating than anything else. You have to type in a 8-digit code to initiate self-destruct sequence on this plasma gun. But honestly, it's like, it's like I don't know what the code is. It's like, she's like, 4. And it's like lagging super hard and of course the countdown is going on and you already know that the plasma gun isn't going to go off it's going to probably finish at about one second left which is exactly what happens but the, the computer's lagging super hard it's just like why are they trying to drag this out this is not, not a good final scene as this is happening though badass chicken red whose name i never remember is fighting against thaddeus with swords I don't know why they have swords. They were literally just shooting at each other. She had a double double barrel and he had a super cool futuristic machine pistol. But you know what? Fine, let's go sword to sword. What? Where are you going, bro? Just unhook the sword that's holding her up. She's literally hanging off the edge due to her sword. Just lift it up. Seconds. Well, he wins anyways. So, turns out Thaddeus gets caught in the corner, gun to head with the wielder's hand belonging to Hester herself. And at this point, Hester takes the final shot to kill Thaddeus. End of the movie, I'm just kidding. He reveals, I'm your father. You know, Star Wars style. She's like, oh, what? Fumbles the gun, drops the gun, guns turned on her. She technically dies here. I'm just kidding again, 2.0. What actually happens is Tom comes in, saves the day, uh, Deus is Ek Machina style, and that's pretty much the end of the movie. 
your history. How is this guy still alive? Oh, fuck. Are you kidding me? Is this PG-8 or what? They still didn't kiss after all this time. What was the point of this movie? What was the point of their character building? There's, there's no real end to this. So that's a brief general recap of the movie. So what do I think? Well, contrary to what I see online, I thought this was a good movie. Before I get into some of the obvious flaws, let's talk about the good. Right off the bat, I have to mention the sound design. It's incredible. Whether you're diving into the scene of the adrenaline momentum wave that comes off of the deadly end of the plasma weapon, Thaddeus's pistol is another great example. I mean, his pistol sounds really damn cool. The acting, for the most part, pretty good. There's really only two that stand out to me. Hera, insane last name. I feel really does a great job in this movie as Hester. Hugo Weaving as Thaddeus, I thought really grabbed my attention whenever he's on the screen. I can see why people close to him would blindly trust him. I thought Shriek's backstory and the role in the movie he did was very well done. I sort of wish, though, it was the entire premise of the movie. Like, just get rid of Thaddeus, just make Shriek the bad guy who's actually a good guy. The idea of cities on wheels is a pretty cool concept that turns out to be a double-edged sword because as I segue into the flaws of this movie, in fact, it really wasn't that much of a factor. The cities on wheels played absolutely no role in any actual main story, except for the first 35 seconds of this film. The biggest problem with this movie is that story-wise, it's completely cookie cutter. It's, done, it's been done before, like seriously. Top politician who was loved by community turned out to be bad. Shocking. Next. Girl character who's always alone and doesn't want any help from anyone, but slowly over time softens up and falls in love. Shocking. Next! Not to mention she's also the chosen one in this chosen one story. The bad guy is bad because fuck, I don't know why. Bad guy trying to take over the world by using insert crazy overpowered oversized weapon here. I could list off a lot more, but better use of my time here is saying that the Mortal Engines is the most predictable movie I think I've seen in a long time. Like to the point where I feel like I have the actual script in my hand. Overall though, I think the pros and cons kind of balance each other out. Though stereotypical, I found myself actually rooting for the main character. Overall, I have to say a solid 3 out of 5. So that's it. Mortal Engines, consider it shut down. Consider the fuel consumption at a halt. Eh, it was a decent movie. I've heard the book is a lot better as book to movie adaptations are usually always better book version. Seeing how I read quite a lot of books and I already have a playlist created on this channel of the book reviews I've done so far, I'm kind of interested to see what the book has to offer. So will I take a look at that? Probably. But for now, I'm your host, Save Planet Entertainment, and I hope you enjoy this review. Peace. Heyo, if you've stuck around this far, you're probably here for the random easter egg soundtrack I put in at the end of every video. While you listen, if you like, click the like button down below and subscribe if you want to see uh, future content. Uh, any support helps uh, tremendously more than you'd ever believe. And if you're super dedicated, uh, you can buy me a coffee, link in the description. Anyways, yeah, that's pretty much it, so hopefully you enjoyed the video and uh, yeah, peace.